Hollis Hell from LaGrange, Georgia, and I'm taking you jousting. My name is Hollis Hale, and I'm a carpenter from LaGrange, Georgia. One of my overall um, goals, I guess, of this program is to be able to go to the Royal Armories in Leeds, England, and joust with the Royal Armories and compete with their jousting team there. I've been enamored with their jousting team for over six years now, since their inception and they are extremely professional. Not only do they have a museum there packed with actual historical armor, books documenting, tournamenting throughout the ages, but they also have a large field dedicated solely for sporting, jousting included, where they can go out and try these methods and actually apply what people did in the past. Here in America, we're just pretending about jousting. We don't really know how it was done or why it was done. And, you know, it was pretty much invented in Europe. And so you've got to go there to actually get a taste and a feel for it. Uh, I think carpentry is probably one of the better professions to be in in association with jousting because since I'm at work swinging a hammer, you know, picking up stuff and everything like that, um, while I'm carrying lumber, I can work out. I can carry the lumber, do curls with it as I'm going. Um, it also conditions your hands. Um, your hands are probably the most dangerous area for jousting because it is so easy for them to get hit. For me, that's a very vital concern because when I come home, I have to earn money with these. And so if I break my hand, I could lose my house. The definition of jousting is from a horse to couch a lance, which is to put it under your armpit and to hold it tight and to strike a target with it. And that's pretty much it. The argument about jousting being a method of warfare or a sport is long, long standing. It was very much like a game of combat football where two teams divided up and they had huge tracts of land and they would literally just have warfare and capture each other and everything. And a bunch of these guys just got together and said, you know, wouldn't it be really cool if we could, I mean, and I'm sure they didn't say cool, but, but they just said, wouldn't it be really a good idea if we could get rid of all of this chaotic fighting and confine this and put it on a smaller field to where you can just pay attention to what you're doing, kind of like you know a game of football. And there are a set of rules for this kind of stuff. And everyone abides by these rules, and we play a game. So as time went by, it came down to a singular opponent against a singular opponent. And they would joust at each other. And they would be doing various things in that, because jousting is just this real broad term that means two guys on horseback with a lance wearing armor trying to hit each other. And then all of these other games are listed underneath jousting. You know, Hollywood has generalized this kind of stuff to where everyone thinks that jousting is for you to get taken out of the saddle, that when you get hit, you should get ripped out of the saddle. But it's not true. There are all these different games to play. The type of game that we're playing at the Royal Armories is a game that is designed to be safe for the riders, but yet look good as well, because the public is coming to see it, and you want them to be interested in history and the sport, and you want them to come to the museum to learn. This is my suit of armor, which if it has to be dated at all, it would be somewhere 16th century Elizabethan era. To begin with the pieces, you start with really the most important of um, the suit, which everything hinges off of, basically, which is this piece called the gorget. Uh, now, the gorget is a collar that fits around your neck, 
if I were not wearing this piece, which is extremely important for safety, I can die instantly jousting. All it takes is for the horse to buck or something, hit the pommel, and throw this breastplate up into my Adam's apple, and it'll crush my larynx, and I'll suffocate in a matter of minutes. It also acts as a way to stabilize the entire suit. The next piece that goes on would be your breastplate. What it's doing is it's accepting the energy and expelling it and moving it around. Which has a back plate too. You have to really have both for jousting because in the event that you do get knocked off the horse, and it is a possibility, the back and the breastplate lock together and cases your whole upper torso. And that keeps your spine from being able to be twisted. And so if you do not have a back plate, you could get your spine broken. The um, next pieces that go on after that are the leg. You then put on your arm. And when you're jousting, when you lock your arm into place to joust, you can see that nothing can get in there. Um, the pauldrons go on next, and um, they're pretty much, as you can see, um, used today in a lot of sporting games, especially American football. They, the designs for the shoulder pads for football came directly from armor. The, the target zone for jousting is right here, and you can see quite a multiple amount of dents there where I've taken hits from it. And what this pauldron does since it's a rounded glancing surface, it will not allow the lance to grab so easily, so it pulls off. The um, next to the last piece is the helm. There are a lot of different designs for helms. This visor became invented so that a knight could, if he had a couple of minutes or whatever, just raise it, and he could get some air or take a drink or do whatever he wanted to do. And then when it comes time to do your business, you drop this visor down and you get ready to go essentially through the eye slot that's really all about you see and to be able to joust and attack your enemy from here you're really only seeing a sliver of your opponent and so you really really have to learn to use um, proximity of your opponent by getting a sliver of him and imagining where everything else is the gauntlets go on lastly because you need your hands to do everything with but then you put them on and it protects you it's said that if a knight falls down that he can't get back up because his armor is too heavy and obviously that's a complete myth now typically jousting evolved especially in the latter part of the 15th century to have what's called a tilt rail and it's a fence down the middle of the field so when a knight is riding and i would be riding at you like this like the armor is set it up, there's a fence between you and your opponent. Now that does several things. It lets the knight who is riding not worry so much about where his horse is going. Because when you put the horse in the direction that you want to travel, the fence tells the horse where to run. So you train it to run along that fence. Another thing is, is that it keeps your opponent separated from you. Oh, we'll see if we get a little gas expelling. Actually, raising a kid is probably excellent training for jousting because the way you have to handle an infant is the way you have to handle a horse. You know, you have to be delicate with them, but yet firm and um, take care of their every need and you know, make them do things that they don't necessarily want to do. If you train a horse properly, you really want them to be what's called battle ready. Mm -hmm. And that means that you could take them into the middle of a conflict and they won't freak out. Um, some horses will get a little nervous because bright lights and shiny things, you know, kind of um, bother them. You gonna let me do this, man? Yeah? yeah. You gonna let me do this? All right, we're gonna try this. Good. Jousting, to me, is stupidity <laughs> because it takes two beings and puts them completely against their natural order because, you know, there's no defense against it as far as the human being is concerned, and a horse is a flight animal. You've got to suppress all of your fear, and at the same time, you've got to convince the horse that there's nothing to worry about, and you've got to, you've got to do all of that while you're opening yourself up to get hit really, really hard. To tell you the truth, 
about how I got into this. I went to a um, Renaissance festival in Chicago, just kind of hang out for the summer and meet some new interesting people. At Chicago, I met my friend Matthew Mansour, and he introduced me to Jousting, and he was the director of this show, which is basically just taking all of the elements of um, history and jousting and chivalry and packing them into one 30-minute program. Of all of the positions that I looked into working for at the Renaissance Festival, the joust was the lowest paying with the most hours. At the time, um, guys whacking each other with sticks on horses didn't sound like a good idea to me for any amount of money, um, especially for 200 bucks a week. So I held out until he paid me 400 and then I did it. I was getting to go f fulfill a childhood dream, jousting, and get paid to do it. All of the um, events that I've been a part of have been sort of pre-planned. Like we're going to in Leeds, a competitive uh, format, I don't know where the guy's going to hit me. You know, I don't know if he's even going to hit me. Um, I know one thing, that he's trying to win. And if he's going to try to win, what is he willing to do to win? How far is he willing to go to win? Within those rules of the game, how far is he going to push the limits of those rules? I guess this is where you start feeling like crap, huh? <laughs> it's gonna be okay. I'll be okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That'd be good, okay? Yeah. Is that a punkaroo? Be careful. I will. Okay. So, this is the part that my wife was talking about, Lisa, that. It had, the reality of the whole thing just really hasn't sunk in yet. It's sinking. It's, <laughs> it's starting to really sink in. I actually have a meeting with the um, Royal Armouries. Want to make a good impression because not being prepared is, a, you know, also a sign of weakness. What I would suggest is that you spend a little bit of time, if you've got time, to be ground crew. Oh, I think so. So you see yeah. what happens when they're charging around. Yeah, that's excellent. Good um, idea. Uh, and then um, this afternoon ride, and we'll have a little look at um, you. And then we, we, all the games you want to play, we, we've got the rings and we've got the sword cuts and we've got the quintain. And then get your armor on uh, during the week, and bits and pieces all, all at once. Yeah, we actually hired the armor out for Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We're suggesting you only joust on Saturday rather than two days. Well, I expect you to doubt my ability. I mean, I'm a nobody, you know, really from nowhere. <laughs> introduce you to uh, our stable master, Andrew Bodley. Andrew, can I introduce you to Hollis? Hollis, oh, Hollis Andrew Bodley, our stable master. Mm -hmm. You guys want to get in here and do this? Feel what I'm feeling? So this is Messenger, and we all call him Boris. Uh, Messenger is a 12-year-old small Russian draft horse, and perfect for jousting. Gets so enthusiastic, a bit like Tigger, really. Bounces a lot. So. Uh, Hollis is here now cleaning him down, which is what we do every morning. Clean out the stables, then it's the horse. We take a lot of time and effort with the horses. Grooming the horses is also a time when you get to know them. So, and you get to know what their attributes are like. If they're a bit jumpy or they're quiet. Most people have no idea that the people who are in armor on the field do all this work behind the stage. Yeah, they just get to see you being the hero and everything, but the unglorified position of being a knight in the modern era, this entire adventure probably would not have been possible without the aid of my very good friend Tobias Capwell, who just happens to be here studying in Leeds, um, getting his PhD in medieval armor. I have apparently adopted the role of Hollis's squire, somewhat in, in an impromptu fashion. The life of a squire is making sure that the knight has absolutely everything that he needs all of the time. It's not just about getting things and running errands. It's about anticipating problems. It's about knowing about armor so that you don't have